Hi everybody, it's time for another spirit art drawing. Happy September and I wanted to let you know if you don't know what spirit art is, it's communication with the spirit world using artwork. So in this case tonight, I will be drawing in this guy and the intention behind this spirit art drawing is that it's a reading for a future viewer. So if you see this drawing and you understand the concept, you recognize who it's of, you know it's for you, then reach out because then you can get um, a scan, a digital scan of the drawing, it's yours. So let's get started on this next spirit art drawing. Okay, this is the drawing and I took some notes during it, so I'm getting a lot of information during the actual drawing. So first of all, uh, I'm not sure if you can see this, but th this drawing is about this individual who is a doctor or a researcher, scientist type, could even, could even have been a biologist. But as you can see here, um, he's very learned. He has this large book, that's the very first thing I saw. And this book was really speaking to him quite a lot. He was very inspired by this individual text. Um, it is not the Bible. I believe it is a scientific text of some type, but actually it's more alchemy. So it has a lot to, more to do with um, the hidden sciences, the occult. And he took what he learned in this specific alchemy book. He really did consider himself an alchemist. He might not have told everybody that, but the things that he was learning from this alchemy book it, are things he was applying to his scientific research. And I think he was trying to find a cure for something. And um, I know he suffered from headaches. I'm not sure if that was the specific thing he was trying to cure. I just think he was trying to do general, like more of a, a general cure. But basically, he was taking blood and I think he was learning some maybe blood magic or something from this alchemy book or taking the idea of transforming um, the human life essence, which would be blood. And you can see here in the drawing, it's here in this um, needle here and taking the blood and doing something to it alchemically, changing its constitution or else kind of burning it up tearing it apart somehow and then re-injecting it and so here is the needle with the blood and then this is a candle so you can see that there's fire and then this is like a dynamite a stick of dynamite and uh, I think that spirits trying to tell me that what he was doing is taking the blood and separating it somehow through fire or through an explosion or something, and then reinserting it into the human body. So here, this is his hand. This is the injection point here. And so I don't think that it quite, it did quite what he wanted, what he thought it was gonna do. But nevertheless, he was very relentless with his research and he was actually taking blood from people without their consent. So if he had like patients or something, I'm not sure how he was taking the blood out without their consent, but it was happening, I think maybe earlier in the uh, 21st century or earlier in the century at some point, where when he lived in history, it was easier to do something like that. It was easier to take people's blood or something without their consent, even though it kind of seems like um, it can't really happen. Well, it did. Uh, it did happen in the name of science. And um, so he thought he was hot stuff. He really thought he was on the edge, on the cutting edge of science um, by doing this sort of work. And um, 
during the reading, he was basically telling me that he's very regretful of what he had done. Um, he thought he was hot stuff. He thought he knew a lot, but you know, after he passed and everything and maybe even slightly before he passed, he did regret all the pain he caused people because he did, he did cause them pain by taking their blood out and burning it or whatever the process was and then basically alchemically changing the blood and then putting it back in their bodies, um, including his himself. Um, he caused a lot of pain to people. I, I'm not sure if anybody died from his experiments, but it definitely was not a good situation overall. It's not what he th he thought was going to happen. Um, he sacrificed the people he loved, I mean, for the for his scientific work. So he didn't spend as much time with his family and his loved ones as he should have because he was too busy basically taking people's blood. And, um, yeah, so he sacrificed his family and his loved ones for his quack science. And he's, he's the one who said quack science. But, um, he does want to say a few things here. I mean, he's not, he's not like a, a passed away spirit in a lot of pain and stuff. He's a very smart man. He knows exactly what he did. He knows in the end that it didn't, this type of science he was trying to do didn't work out. And he was make, causing all this pain to his friends and family and of course his patients in the name of science because he was going for some sort of um, big scientific discovery using alchemy in secret. Nobody knew he was using alchemy, but he knew he was using alchemy and sort of like blood magic or whatever stuff he was reading. He didn't quite understand what he was reading. I think that other people that really understand um, spiritual things and metaphysics maybe understood this book and he thought he understood the material and he didn't and so he was using it in the wrong way and he regrets that and his message is that even though his science was wrong and it was um, full of errors and we could consider it quack science today that science can still make advancements and learn from the failures of previous scientists including him because he feels like he tried really hard but he made a lot of mistakes and in the end his science didn't pan out the way that he expected it to and that um yeah, scientists and doctors can learn even from failed science. All scientific exploration can be used to further the fields of modern science, and science can utilize spiritual components, such as respect and reverence. He was not being respectful or reverent of his uh, patients or his family or even the life-giving elements that he was working with, such as human blood. He was not being reverent for to blood. And um, yeah, so he believed in the occult, but he never told his family or any of his patients. And he was very arrogant with his use of these sort of things. Um, he regrets the pain of his patients and he regrets the pain that he caused his family. Um, so, if you know who this man is, there he is, he's right here. He has a beaker here, so he's reading all this stuff here. Yeah, if you know who this man is, feel free to reach out. Um, so, also I wanted to say I'll be giving Spirit Art readings at Serenity Rocks this weekend on Saturday. Have a great night, everybody.